Here we go. One Lord, yeah. One Lord. One day. One day. We come. To praise the Lord, clapping our hands, lifting our voice, we come to praise the Lord. One Lord, yeah, one thing we come to praise the Lord just because you're worthy out of everything. You're done for me just because you're worthy. You've been so good to me, Lord, and I just can't thank you enough. One Lord, yeah, one thing we come to praise you, Lord. Clapping our hands, lifting our voice, we come. To praise you, Lord, just because you're so worthy. Out of everything you've done for me, just because you were there. You've been so good to me, Lord, and I just can't thank you enough. One Lord, yeah, one thing we come. Praise the Lord, clapping our hands, lifting our voice, clapping our hands, lifting our voice, clapping our hands, lifting our voice, clapping our hands, lifting our voice. We come to praise the Lord. I tell you that we come. To praise you, Lord. I said we come. To praise you, Lord. We come. To praise you, Lord. Clapping our hands. Lifting our voice. Clapping our hands. Lifting our voice. Clapping our hands. Lifting our voice. Clapping our hands. Lifting our voice, I tell you that we come to praise the Lord. I tell that we come to praise the Lord. I tell we come to praise the Lord. We come to praise the Lord. Clapping our hands, lifting our voice, clapping our hands. Lifting our voice, clapping our hands. Lifting our voice, clapping our hands. Lifting our voice. I tell you that we come to praise the Lord. We come to praise the Lord. We come. How many of came to praise them? To praise the Lord. We come. To praise you, Lord, clapping our hands, lifting our voice, clapping our hands, lifting our voice, clapping our hands, lifting our voice, clapping our hands, lifting our voice. We come to praise you, Lord. We come. To praise the Lord, yeah, we come to praise the Lord. We come to praise the Lord. Praise you, praise you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many of you came to praise? Yeah, yeah. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Ah. 
I love you. My heart, my heart, my mind, my, mind, my, mind, my soul belongs to you. You pay the price for me, way back on Calvary, that is why, and I lift you up, I'm going to magnify your name. Oh, yeah, that is why. That is why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, everybody, lift your voice and say, I love you. How many of you really love him this morning? Because, because you care for me. in such a special way. And I lift you up. I lift you up. I'm gonna magnify and your name. That is why. Come on, can we say that again? My heart, my, heart, my, mind, my mind, my soul belongs my to you. Belongs to you. you paid the price for me. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Way back on Calvary. And I lift you up. And I'll magnify your name. That is why. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That is why. That is why. Yeah, yeah. That is why Come on, give God a hand, praise if your heart is fear. Thank you. 
Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my Savior. God, my healer. Yeah, yeah. God, my deliverer. Yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hey, we pray. What you say? Sing hallelujah. Every we pray to our God. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Sing hallelujah. Every pray. Every pray is to our God. Here we go. Here we go. God, my Savior. God my, God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Let's say it again. God, my Savior. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. 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 Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. I lift my hands and praise Him. I lift my voice to praise Him. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise to our God. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. If you know praises belong to him, come on and clap your hands. Come on. If praises belong to him, come on. Come on and celebrate him. Anybody glad to be here? Anybody glad to be here this morning? All praises belong to God. Come on and celebrate him. Come on. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. At this time, we will have our prayer by Reverend Atterbury. Then a core response. Welcome into this place. Amen. <laughs> While I got y'all standing, happy, happy Memorial Day Amen. to all the veterans. Father God, we come boldly before your holy throne thanking you. We just thank you, Father, for watching us over the night, Father. For waking us up to this day, Father. Although it's raining outside, Father, we want to thank you for this rain, just like we thank you for the sunshine, Father. Father, this is the day that you have brought. We will rejoice and be glad in it. 
Father, we just thank you that you've brought us a mighty long ways, Father. With all of our victories, Father. With all of our wins, Father. With all of our skirmishes and battles, Father. We know it with you who fought our battles, Father. And we just want to say thank you, Father. Because it was you who freed us, Father. It was you who gave us the freedom from sin, from lying, from cheating, from stealing, from gossiping. You gave us the power to overcome backbiting. Father, you gave us the power to overcome hatred, Father. And Father, you chose our men to go overseas and fight these battles, Father. And on today, Father, this weekend, we want to honor them, Father. We want to lift them up, Father. And regardless to whether they were in the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, or the Coast Guard, Father. Whether they were in uniform and civilian clothes, Father. As long as they were in defense of these United States, we want to lift them up, Father. Because everybody served, but some people gave their all, Father. And we want to remember those people. On this day, Father, Memorial Day 2016, Father, we want to lift them up, Father. Not only them, Father, but their dependents, their survivors, Father. Because they fought a mighty war, Father. We might be free to have this religious service today. We might be free to have this education, Father. We might be free of communism. From Hitlerism, Father. Father, you help us win over in Germany against Hitler. We won over in Italy against Mussolini. We won over in Russia against Brezhnev, against Khrushchev, against Satan. And Father, you allowed us to win over in Japan, Father. You allowed us to win, Father, all of our wars that we fought, Father. And we just want to say thank you, Father. And while we at it, Father, we want to thank you for the man, the angel of this house, Father. We want to say thank you, Father, that you saw fit to send this man to us, Father. And we just want to say thank you. And Father, we pray that you continue to dip him in the well of wisdom, that he would come out preaching to us, says your Lord. Right in dividing your word and spirit and in truth. And Father, we just pray that you will bless all the other ministers on the rostrum, Father. And Father, we pray that you will bless each auxiliary leader and members of the auxiliaries, Father. And Father, we just pray that you will bless those who don't know you for the pardon of their sin. That they may come running and saying, I yield, I yield. What must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Father, I'm just so glad. I thought they'd never ask me. But I'm just so glad that you enlist me in your army, Father, that I could t gladly tell them, accept your Lord as your Lord and Savior. Repent from your sins. Make a determination to follow him into eternity, and you will inherit the kingdom of God. Father, we just pray that you will bless those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. On this day, Father, we pray that you will bless those who are incarcerated this day, Father. Bless all of those who are serving our country, Father, in whatever status, whatever sector they are serving, Father. As long as they are defending these United States, Father, you brought us to these mundane shores, Father, that we can lift our head and be glad that we are in the United States of America. Father, you saw fit for each of us to be here on this Memorial Day. And Father, we just pray this and all other prayers in your darling son, Jesus' name. And may the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. Amen and Amen.
Good morning, Central. Please take note of this week's upcoming events. Our second quarterly seed offering will be lifted on today during our worship services. <laughs> Baptism and the right hand of fellowship will be held today at 5.45 p.m. The church office will be closed on tomorrow in observance of Memorial Day. The Central Baptist Church Summer Enrichment Program will begin on June 6th through August 12th, 2016 from 7.30 a.m. until 5.30 p.m. daily. The registration fee is $50 and the weekly fee is $75 per child. Registration packages are available in the church office or on our website at www.centralbaptistcolumbia.org. Vacation Bible School will begin on June 6th through the 10th from 6 to 8 p.m. This year's theme is we think you've got talent. All ages are invited. Registration will be held today after the 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship services in the vestibule. The Central Baptist Church annual picnic will be held at Saluda Shoals Park on Saturday, the 11th, from 1 p.m. until 5 p.m. The shelter location is River Birch Shelter. Pastor Ezel's itinerary, Friday, June 3rd, 7 p.m., Grace Christian Church. Friday, June 17th, 7 p.m., Taylor Memorial Baptist Church. <coughs> Tuesday, June 21st, 7.30 p.m., Antioch Baptist Church. Sunday, June 26th, 3 p.m., New Covenant Missionary Baptist Church. To view our church announcements, please log on to www.centralbaptistcolumbia.org. This concludes this week's upcoming events. We now turn it over to the rostrum. Come on and clap your hands in this place. Amen. We thank Reverend Atterbury for that prayer. We thank the choir for that core response and we thank you for the announcements. Is there any visitors in the house? We're gonna ask at this time that you please stand. If you're visiting Central Baptist Church, come on Central, let's welcome them. Amen. Anytime you feel free, you always, the doors are always open at Central Baptist Church, so please come again. Come on Central, show them some love. It's offering time in the house. Anybody glad to be able to give? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's offering time. There was told there was three books you need in a Baptist church. The hymn book, the Bible, and your pocketbook. All right. So we're looking for your pocketbook at this time. All right. All right. Let us stand as we pray. Let's put our gifts in your hands, whatever you have to give. Put it in your hand. Let's pray. Kind Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you, God, for this opportunity to come and give, God. God, we want you to bless it more than we ever been blessed before, God. God, the ones that are able to give, keep, continue to bless them. The ones that are not able to give, God, God, give them more, God, and give them a double portion. God, we love you, God, and we thank you. For as in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Please be governed by the ushers. Face the aisles and be governed by the ushers.
Let's just say, man, you love the Lord. Say, man, again. If God has been mighty good to you, put your hands together and give God a hand clap a bit. Is there anybody expecting a miracle? Does anybody believe there's a miracle in this room and your name is on it? I dare you to put a praise on it and give God praise in this building because the Lord is worthy to be praised. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, choir. Say it, say it. How many know he'll make a way? joined the church, have not received the right hand of fellowship, or have not been baptized at baptism services today at 5.45. Amen, somebody. Amen. The weatherman has predicted that the weather is going to be bad, but baptism will be held on the inside. Amen. 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 Family Fest, we didn't have to move it. It is already going to be on the inside. Is where Reverend at that time, Tasha Carr was going to be singing, put a praise on it, and the Columbia Mass Choir and Keith Warner Boy Johnson going to be singing. Amen. Amen. We're going to be in the Lord's house. We're going to give those a right hand in fellowship, baptize those who need to be baptized so we can fellowship together as a church family. We're asking our members to come back and support those who join the church. It's nothing like joining the church and being welcomed by the family. Amen, somebody. We're inviting our officers to come back. Amen. Remember, I tell you, part of leadership is accountability. Amen, somebody. Part of leadership is not about just sitting on the first two rows, brethren. It's about being in position. So when we introduce and call that deacon's name, they would know who that deacon is. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, Pastor, are you going to put the pictures on the wall of the officer? We're going to have you in live living color so they can see your face. Amen. When you come back home this evening to fellowship with us, we're looking forward to that. And we remind you that in our announcement, they talked about academic recognition for our young people. I believe you got to encourage young people. If you don't, the enemy will. Amen, somebody. Now, each marking period, we have our honor roll where we present honor roll recognition. Some of our children may not make the honor roll. We don't want to leave them out. So our church is having an academic recognition banquet. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. And that academic uh, recognition banquet is going to be on one day. Let me figure out what it is. Somebody say, help them, Lord. It's on, you know, that's education, June the 26th. The academic banquet's on June the, Friday, June the 24th. That's the 24th before Education Recognition Day on the 26th. Amen, somebody. 
and we're going to have in our family life center and there are forms in the entrance to the vestibule in the back that you can get and fill out on behalf of your children there are three lines on here which means that you can write down three things they have accomplished during the course of the year if it's the honor roll if it's perfect attendance if it's a star student we just want to make them feel good amen somebody so on Sunday when we do honorable recognition, we just recognize academic averages. Here it gives you a chance to brag on your child just a little bit. Amen. You said, Pastor, we only have three lines because we know if you had ten, some of y'all would take advantage of all ten lines. So we did three, one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. Amen, somebody. Pants, please, ma'am, please, sir, get the form and fill them out on behalf of your children. This is not just those who did not make the honor roll. It's for all of our children within the church. We want to honor you and recognize you. We're going to have a full dinner for you. We're going to give you recognition certificates. We want to make you feel good and make you feel special at our academic recognition banquet. And this needs to be turned in to the academic recognition box by June the 8th. Somebody said, Pastor, that's not long. Well, it was a couple of weeks. You got the holiday weekend coming up, then you got the following weekend. Get it in. Because all you do is to write it in there. We want to honor our young people. Our young people are a gift from God. And we're going to have to give account to God of how well we have taken care of the gifts that God has given to us. Let's come together and recognize them in a very special way. Grace K through 11. K through 11. You can pick up these recognition forms in the vestibule at the front as well as the back. Please, ma'am, please, sir, will you govern yourselves accordingly. Amen. There's a sweet spirit in this place, and we know it is the spirit of the Lord. I want to thank God for the prayer from Reverend Atterbury, but thank God for Reverend Byron Dixon presiding for us on this morning. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Byron is a musician, but Byron is a licensed minister, and his desire is the pastor. So that's God's calling upon his life. It's clear he said, Pastor, I love playing, but God has called me to pastor. He said, uh, on the Sundays when I'm not playing, when I can avail myself, I want to be in worship at the 8 o'clock services so I can learn. Right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Hey, somebody else say amen to that. Amen. See, I want to learn what it takes to be a pastor, you know. We're going to let him sit in on some of the meetings we do and some other things along those lines. Because, see, most young preachers just want to get out there. They don't want to take the time to learn and to study. I thank God for the spirit that God has placed in him to want to learn the craft that God has called him to. Amen. So we thank God much for him. Every fifth Sunday, we lift a quarterly seed offering at our church. And we use the seed offering to bless the community. Our church partnership with four schools in our community. Just recently, a week or so ago, Eau Claire High School had a family day, parent day, and our church financially contributed toward that. Recently, Logan Elementary School with Sister Sheila Washington had a program, and we made donations and purchased gift cards for some of the students and family there at the school. We partnership with E.E. E. Taylor as well as Gibbs Middle School. We just don't want to be a church in the community. We want to make a difference in this community. And when you sow a seed, when you sow, you got to believe that the harvest will come. Amen, somebody. My son Brandon right now, we're, we're, we're looking for a car for Brandon to, to help him get him a car. And I'm so in the day that when I walk on the lot, amen somebody, I feel a reduction already. Amen somebody, I feel a reduction already when I sow, amen. Okay. Um, I bought him a car back in 2000 and I think it's two. What is 14 years later? It's about time to get him another car. Amen, somebody. And when I sow, I'm sowing with expectation that a good deal out there is already waiting when we walk on the lot. Amen, somebody. So you got to sow believing that God can do what he said he would do. Amen. We're going to pray over this seed as we get ready to sow it. Sow it in good soil. 
and trust and believe that the Lord will make a way somehow. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to sow this seed right now. When you sow, you grow. We sow on a seed where there is a need. Yes, we're giving you our tithes and our offering. But every now and then, you got to go beyond the tithe and offering and make a sacrificial gift of sowing a seed. We believe we're sowing this seed in good soil. When we look at what is happening with our youth at this church, we're sowing in good soil. When we look at how we're partnershiping with the schools in this community, we're sowing in good soil. When we look for what we're doing for our senior citizens, we are sowing in good soul so thank you for allowing us to sow in good soul and we believe that not if the harvest come but when the harvest come we'll reap a harvest based on our faithfulness of soul in jesus name we pray amen you don't have to walk the ushers will pass the basket so you can comfortably give from where you're seated amen follow the direction of our ushers
Amen. Thank you so much for that which you have given. Amen. We thank God on our fifth Sunday for our junior ushers. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand cup of praise for our junior ushers. Amen. 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 We thank God for our new addition to our junior ushers on the day. Sister Trinity back there on the door. Give you a raise your hand back there, Trinity. Hold it down on the door. Amen. Amen. Kathy, how many junior ushers do we have now? About 32 junior ushers. Amen. Training them for the future work to be done. Amen. When Trinity and Jada have girl nights at our house, 11, 30, 12 o'clock, some nights I hear the TV and things going in the room. I go check. They fast asleep <laughs> till I leave out of the room. <laughs> Amen, somebody. We thank God so much for our young people and for the work that they are doing. At this time, we will have our Memorial Day tribute by Sister Beverly Adams. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Century. It gives me great pleasure to stand before you in recognition of our veterans. And we appreciate the service that they did to our country. And right now, I'd like for all our veterans to please stand. Let's give them a hand. we just like to thank y'all, and we appreciate everything you did to our country. And it is a tradition here at Central that we do the laying of the wreath at the Vietnam Memorial. So after 11 o'clock a.m. service, we will be taking the wreath, placing it at the Vietnam Memorial, Veteran Memorial. And it's a little personal for me because I am a widow of a veteran, and I've had the opportunity to work 20 six plus years around veterans at Fort Jackson. So I know how important it is for y'all to be acknowledged because it wasn't easy and we just support the spouses too. So right now, let's just give them a hand. Thank you so much, Century. Amen, amen. At this time during the month of May, and this is the final Sunday during the month, we have been recognizing our seniors, recognizing our elders all month long based on their age, not based on the number of years that they have been members of the church, amen, but based on their age. We want to honor them, and at this time, we ask my wife, Cookie, our first lady, to come for our presentation on this morning, amen. I am elated and excited to have the opportunity on this morning to recognize one of our senior saints. Ms. Hattie Wilson, will you please come forward? While Ms. Hattie is coming, I'm going to ask that her family please stand and remain standing until we have finished recognizing her. Turn around to the audience so they can see how beautiful she is. A godly woman, a woman of beauty, a woman of grace, a woman of excellence beholding God's face. She walks with the Lord with integrity, knowing her purpose and her destiny. No matter what happens, she walks in God's love, reflecting the beauty of her father above. Sister Wilson was born on June 19, 1952 in Winsboro, South Carolina. Her family relocated to Casey, South Carolina where she attended Lexington County Schools, graduating from Lakeview High School. Miss Hattie, as we affectionately call her, 
was baptized at New Life Baptist Church at an early age. She joined Central Baptist Church in 1975, where she served faithfully on several ministries. Miss Hattie is the very proud mother of 13 children, 28 grandchildren, 52 great-grandchildren, and four great-great-grandchildren, whom are lovingly whom are lovingly referred to as her heartbeats. When Central Baptist Church started having 8 a.m. service, Miss Hattie realized that along with some of her grandchildren, many of the youth staying for Sunday school were going without breakfast. Therefore, without a second thought, she began preparing breakfast complete with cold drinks for all who cared to visit her car after 8 a.m. service. To put a pen note, my family was also benefactors of her generosity. She continues to ensure that the babies and some, of, uh, some adults excuse me, get something to eat and drink every Sunday after the early service. This simple act of kindness not only brings joy to those who enjoy her culinary skills, but brings great joy to Miss Hattie as well. Miss Hattie is a retired cook from South Carolina National Bank. She enjoys cooking and serving others. If she is not standing over her stove, you can find her working with her plants and flowers. Her favorite pastime is spending time with her grandchildren, especially her grandsons, and solving word fine problems word find puzzles. One of her favorite scriptures is from 3 John chapter 1 verse 4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Miss Hattie, we want you to know that we love you and today we honor you. In the words of Maya, Maya Angelou, you are a phenomenal woman. Please stand and help us recognize Miss Hattie Wilson at this time. Let the church say amen. amen. 1997, when I became pastor of the Central Baptist Church, my meal was furnished every Sunday from Miss Hattie's trunk. <laughs> amen, somebody. Gave new meaning to Hattie's kitchen. Amen. We thank God so much for our amen. At this time, we'll have a musical selection. Then we will come back with the preach word. Oh! 
before. He'll catch you before you fall. Jesus will be your friend. He'll guide you until the end. My God. God is standing by. My God, He is standing near. My Jesus, He'll be right there. Well, let me tell you that He rolled the dark clouds away. He'll hear you when you pray. He'll hear you when you call. He'll get you before you fall. Oh, yeah. Jesus will be your friend. Yeah. He'll guide you until the end. My God. Thank you so much, choir, for that selection. The book of Acts, chapter number 3, verse 4 and 5. Acts, chapter number 3, verses 4 and 5. Let us stand together. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he the one who was doing the looking, gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. You will receive it. I just want to talk a little while today from this sermonic thought. A spirit of expectancy. 
a spirit of expectancy. Let's look at those verses four and five in the Message Bible by Eugene Peterson. Eugene Peterson said it this way. Peter with John at his side looked him straight in the eye and said, look here. The man looked up expecting to get something from them. The Today's Living Bible translate those verses this way. They looked at him intently and then Peter said, look here. The, man, the lame man looked at them eagerly expecting a gift, a spirit of expectancy. Let me pose a question, my brothers and sisters, on this morning. Do you have a spirit of expectancy? Do you truly believe that God can do what no other can do? Do you truly believe that God is great and that he's greatly to be praised? Do you truly believe that God is in the blessed business? Do you truly believe that God has a blessing with your name on it? Well, I wish I had a prayer in church in here this morning. I know that he has healed other folks, but do you believe that he can heal you? I know that he has worked miracle for other folks, but do you believe that he can work a miracle for you? Do you have a spirit of expectancy? Uh, do you know who you are and whose you are? For the Bible clearly says to us in Psalms 84 and 11 that for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. The Psalm in 139 and 14 says, I will praise thee for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous are thy works that thy soul no right way of. I want to remind somebody that we ought to have a spirit of expectancy. I need to remind somebody today that you're the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are the lender and not the borrower. And I want to remind you regardless of what you're going through, that you ought to have a spirit of expectancy. You do not allow what you're going through to define who you are. Well, I wish I had a witness in here that I may be going through, but it does not define who I am. Uh, you ought to have a spirit of expectancy. I stop by to tell you that you are better than that. Regardless of what's happening in your life, I, I need to speak and touch your spirit this morning that you are better than that. Regardless of what you're going through, uh, you are better than that. Uh, regardless of what enemies on your track, I uh, stop by to tell you you are better than that. I stop by to tell you you may be going through, but, but you're getting ready to come out because you are better than that. Uh, I wish I had a few praises in the house that what I'm going through would not take me out and uh, what I'm going through would not take me under because I have a spirit of expectancy. Does anybody know that God is still able. Does anybody know that God can do what no other can do? I, I want to speak to your spirit. I, I want to touch your spirit. I, you are better than that. I, you're getting ready to come out. How do you know he's going to turn it around? What the devil meant for evil, that God will take what was meant for evil and that God will turn it around for your good. Uh, somebody shout turn it around. Somebody shout turn it around. Somebody shout turn it around. Shout it like you feel it. Shout it like you mean it. Shout it like it's in your spirit that is getting ready to turn around. I wish I had somebody said things are getting ready to get better. Can we praise him for better things to come? Can we praise him for what God is getting ready to do? Can we praise him for what God is doing right now? Can we praise him for what God is about to do? I need a few praises in here that'll give God the praise, that'll give God the glory. Is there anybody here that love my Jesus? Is there anybody here that love my Lord? You have a spirit of expectancy. I want you to know things are going to turn out better for you. It may not be good right now, but it's working together for your good. Do I have a witness in here? I know you may be going through right now, but when you come out, uh, you're going to have a testimony. Uh, when you come out, uh, the joy bells will start ringing. When you come out, you're going to say, that's all I've been through, that I still uh, have 
joy. Uh, is that anybody testimony early this morning that after all that I've been through, I still, I said I still, I said I still have joy. I feel somebody's spirit right now. Is there anybody here that still, still, still that can praise God in the calm? And you can praise God in the storm because I still have joy. Has the Lord been good to you? Has the Lord made a way for you? Has the Lord opened a door for you? Has the Lord worked a miracle for you? Has the Lord delivered you? I feel a praise uh, about the breakout in this place. Uh, somebody came here this morning. You were waiting in heaven, Lord. But do I have a witness here that God can do things that can't nobody else do, man? Like the Lord can do, man. I feel a praise over here. I feel a praise over here. I feel a praise over here. I feel a praise over there. I feel a praise back there. Since we praise him all over, can we just praise him together? Can we take a 15 second praise break early this morning? 15 and 14 and 13 and 12 and 11 and 10 and 9 and 8 and 7 and 6 and 5 and 4 and 3 and 2 and 1 and open your mouths all over this place and give God the highest. You got to develop a spirit in you of expectancy. Don't just settle for anything. Do you know who your daddy is? Do you know that he's rich in houses and land? Do you know that he owns all the cattle upon the hill? Do you know that our souls don't belong to us? They belong, our soul belongs to him? You don't know how powerful you are. Dunamis. From the Greek word dynamite. And I'm not talking about J.J. Evans. Do you know how powerful you are? Stop settling for less than what God has called you to be. Huh? You need to tell the enemy, roll up on me if you want to. You are explosive. Quit playing beneath the game plan that God has for your life. Have a spirit of expectancy. In our text on the day, this account takes place in the shadow of Pentecost. The spirit has come and indwelt the believers and the church is alive and well. It is on this day that Peter and John encountered a man who has a great need. He was hopeless in himself, but there was power in the name of Jesus. Oh, that's good news there. Can I say that again? He was hopeless in, his, in himself, but there was power in the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, his life was transformed. I want you to know there's still power in the name of Jesus. It's a name that is above every name. It's a name that I all must bow to and recognize as Lord. It is a name that angels worship even now. I want to look on this encounter as we consider. I want to remind you, my brothers and sisters, there is something about the name of Jesus. The text said that now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. It opens with the word now. Now is an introductory word in the text. What the introductory word does, Reverend Byron Dixon, is introduce you to something that's getting ready to happen in light of something that has already happened. Huh? Introducing you to something getting ready to happen in light of something that has already happened. It's a now Peter and John. You see, and is a conjunction. And what a conjunction does is connect Peter and John. Unlikely folks working together for the advancement of the kingdom. You know, Peter was hothead. Peter would cut you and cuss you. John was a little bit on the passive side. If Peter couldn't chat a committee, Peter quit. If Peter couldn't lead the song, he wouldn't sing. 
Peter had to be in charge of everything. Now he was John on the passive side, so normally you wouldn't put an aggressive Peter with a weak John. But it said what had happened back in chapter number two on the day of Pentecost. Uh, so when the Holy Spirit fills the place, uh, the Holy Spirit will bring together folk who would normally work together. Oh, I wish I had a prayer in church. Uh, you can't walk around talking about I can't get along with somebody. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can get along with anybody. You can serve with anybody. You can sing with anybody. You can pray with anybody. You can usher with anybody if you feel with the Holy Spirit it said now Peter and John they went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer it's good to have some prayer time the Jewish calendar had three regular times of prayer these two disciples who were great spiritual leaders of the early church they had become close companion as an example Peter sent a hand signal to John to ask Jesus who the betrayer was John and Peter followed the law of the night of the arrest, and John obtained permission for Peter to enter the courtyard of the high priest. They both ran together to the grave of the resurre on resurrection morning. Therefore, it is not surprising that both will be going together now to the temple to the hour of prayer. It's good to have a prayer partner. Huh? It's good to have somebody that you can pray with, and somebody who will pray with you. I used to hear the saints of old say, if you pray for me, then I'll pray for you. And guess what we'll do? We're going to watch God change things. Uh, how many of you know there's still power in prayer? It's good to have somebody you can pray with that ain't going to tell your business. I, I wish I had a witness in here. It's good to have somebody you can pray with going to accept you unconditionally for the way you are. Amen, somebody. When you're messed up, they ain't pointing the finger at you all the time, but they they lifting you up in prayer. They ain't dragging you down. They ain't pulling you down. They ain't running you down. It's good to have a genuine, authentic prayer partner. Can I tell you some news? I'm glad somebody prayed for me. That I have a witness in here. I'm glad that somebody had me on their mind and somebody took the time to call my name in prayer. Anybody glad that somebody prayed for you? <laughs> Anybody remember when we were out late running the streets and getting in late at night and mama had been praying for I, I wish I had a witness in here. Anybody remember when daddy locked the windows and locked the doors but mama left one crack for us to get I wish I had a witness in here. I'm glad that somebody prayed for me. Uh, can I give you a testimony? We haven't always been in church all our lives. We had not always been worshiping God on Sunday morning. That was sometime the hangover was so bad from Saturday night. Don't be playing with with me today that you couldn't make it in church on Sunday morning but how many say I thank God I'm not where I used to be but I'm thank God I'm not where I shall be cause the Lord is not through with me yet do I have a witness in here anybody know that the Lord is still working on them I, I told somebody the other day if you want to know what type of house I am I'm a hood house H-U-D I'm wholly under development do I have a witness in here I'm not there yet but the Lord is still working on me. Do I have anybody here know that the Lord is still working on you? Anybody got some raggedy edges? Anybody have some spots and some shortcomings that say some things you should not say sometimes but the Lord is still working on you? You better tell your haters don't judge me. Tell them the Lord is still working on me. Tell them don't roll up on me now. I'm, I'm not there yet so, so don't be all up in my face like you think I'm, that my weakness uh, uh, take my meekness from my weakness uh, but tell them the Lord is still working on me. Tell him I got to praise God because I know how I used to be and I know where the Lord has delivered me from. Is there anybody here just can look back over their lives and look and see what the Lord has brought you from? Can you do one thing for me? Turn and look back and see what the Lord has done for you. Just look back and think back and see what the Lord has done for you. Can anybody praise him for a good look back? <laughs> Can anybody praise him and remember where the Lord has already brought you from? I wish I had somebody. I remember how I used to be. But God is still good. It's good to have a prayer partner. Some Old Testament devotional habits were still practiced by the believer. At the hour of prayer, the purpose in going to the temple was to pray. Uh, the prayer in the crowd has become smaller today. I once heard somebody say, when, when the weakest Christian pray, the strongest demon in hell trembles. 
Can I say that again? When the weakest Christian pray, the strongest demon in hell begins to tremble. It's at a time being the ninth hour, this was three o'clock in the afternoon. Peter and John are often found together in the scripture. Remember I said earlier, see they were fishing and the partners in the fishing business. Uh, they prepared the last Passover for Jesus. Uh, they were together from time to time. They ministered to the Samaritans who believed on Jesus Christ. Now they are filled. They are different now. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. The apostles now were no longer competing for greatness, but they were last working together to build the church. There ought not be any competition in the church. Do I have a witness in here? There ought not be any competition within the church. We don't compete in the church. But what we do is that we work together for God to get the glow. Man. There ought not to be any competition in the church. Uh, nobody's competing with one another in the Lord's house. See, the strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. Uh, if a brother or sister is weak, we ought to lift them up. But nobody ought to be competing for the glow, man, because the glow man, belongs to God. The condition of the man Peter and John met up with at the temple obviously needed a miracle of healing. It said it was a certain man lame from his mother's womb. This man was so lame he could not walk and had to be carried everywhere he went. Birth defects in those days were seldom corrected because they did not have the medical help which we thankfully possess today from his mother's womb. The man had never known a day in his life in which he could walk. This man was plagued by this condition from the day of his birth. This is like the condition of every sinner. They laid them daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple. Because of his problem, all the lame man could do was beg for alms. He did it at the temple. Many people like this lame man still view the place of worship chiefly as a place where we could come and what we can get out, but never what we can give in. Such folks are seldom interested in spiritual growth, but they are interested in what, it can, be, what can be done for themselves. Now it said in Acts 3, 3 and 5, Who seeing Peter, this lame man, and John about to go in the temple, he went to them and asked on, like the Salvation Army worker who rings that bell in front of a store, where you enter the lame man was at one of the entrance of the temple, asking Peter and John for home. Peter now, fastened his eyes upon him, said, Look on us. Why could Peter say that boldly? Because you're looking at a different Peter. And you're looking at a different John. I could not have said that Peter said before chapter 2. But now that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, I can say look on us. Because it ought to be something different about us. Uh, see, somebody ought to see something different about you. If you are a child of God, uh, you don't need to wear a long cross around your neck. Uh, you don't have to preach to that robe hanging down from the floor. Uh, you don't have to put, project Jesus out of your mouth every time you speak. But you ought to be able to say to somebody, look on us. And you ought to see something different about us. Peter and John gave an unusual attention to the lame man. And when they gave attention to him, they asked him. John uh, wanted to get the man's undivided attention, for they had a message and a miracle for him. They expected in the confrontation. The man gave heed unto them. He was expecting to receive some money, but all he needed was a little mercy. The man had his mind on money, and that's all he expected. That is a worldview of helping people. Let me throw something out this free. All money does is magnify what you're all about. It makes a good person better than a bad person worse. All it does is magnify what you're all about. And money doesn't always solve the problem. As Peter and John walked by the man, uh, the man was asked to look on them. He looked up expecting to receive something. He had been there many days before. This was nothing unusual. The man expected to receive a piece of money. He was not thinking of receiving healing. But what I give the man credit for, he had a spirit of expectancy. Huh? Uh, when, when they said look on us, he looked and he expected to receive what he had been getting from everybody else. He expected a little corn to rattle in the cup. That's why he gave heed. He had a spirit of expectancy. This man's need was greater than a piece of money, and yet he was thinking toward that way. My brothers and sisters, instead of money, 
This man got something far better. He got a cure for his condition, a cure he would not trade for any hand now, and a cure which would end his arms seeking problem. I like the response. Silver and gold, I have none. Peter and John had no money for the hand now. This would be disappointing to the man, but he got something far better. They went on to say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Do I have a witness in him? Often God gives us a command for our blessing. The idea that the commands are burdened is refuted again and again in the scripture. Many times the command precedes our blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, that's something about that name. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that the man did not receive what he thought he needed. But he got something much greater. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And the text said immediately, I want you to know we serve a right now, God. That immediately his feet and anchor bones received strength. And because we received strength, he was able to get up from where he was. His feet and his ankle received strength. And the man began leaping, walking, and praising God. Uh, is that all right there? There are your three points already there. Leaping and walking and praising God. Uh, do I have a witness in him? Yes, when he received uh, his strength, uh, the man showed evidence uh, just how good the Lord had been. Uh, three and eight and he leaping up stood and he walked and then he entered with them in the temple. Well, it said that he was carried one time, but now he was leaping, walking, uh, and praising God. Uh, I'm getting ready to press toward a close right now, but if you look at the words in the text, uh, it said that the man was was leaping the man was walking and the man was praising God uh, from basic English 101 uh, we find that when a word ends with ing that is normally in the part of simple form uh, do I have a witness in him where the words were in a verb form but if you want the verb to become a part of simple uh, you drop and add the ing so that's why we have walk and leaping and praising God. It is a participle, but it comes a present active participle for walking, leaping, and praising God. And then the text of all the people now saw him walking and praising God. And in other words, all the people now saw this miracle. All the people who had seen him there begging day after day, they saw him walking, leaping, and praising God uh, oh I don't know how you feel about it but that's good news right there when the Lord has done something for you there ought to be some evidence in your life uh, when everybody see you uh, they ought to see a miracle that's looking back at them uh, do I have a witness in here I believe there's somebody here know that only feet that the Lord has are our feet uh, the only eyes that the Lord has are our eyes uh, the only voice that the Lord has is our voice. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Well, he had a spirit of expectancy. I wish I had somebody that will pray with me right now. I stop by to tell you that I don't care what shape you're in right now. That you need a spirit of expectancy. Well, how do I know? Because my Bible, I said my Bible, I said my Bible. Bobo will tell me so. Uh, if you got a spirit of expectancy, you can say in John 15 and 17 that if ye abide in me according to the word of God, and my word abide in you, uh, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. A spirit of expectancy. John 14 and 12 saying, Very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me that works out. I do that he shall do greater work.
spirit of expectancy. If ye shall ask anything in my name, then I will do it. Do I have a witness in him? Spirit of effectiveness. It said that greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. A spirit of expectancy. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, then who can be against us? Spirit of expectancy. That we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Spirit of expectancy. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Spirit of expectancy. He will give me a peace that will surpass all understanding. Spirit of expectancy. Now to him that is able to do abundantly exceeding above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh within us. We got a spirit of expectancy. It's like anybody here that has the spirit of expectancy. I don't know how you feel, but I feel it. My God. I said, my God. I said, my God. Can do all things. It's like anybody here that expect that God is able to do for you. I, I wish I had a praying church in here. I wish I had somebody that would give my God the praise and give my God the glory. If you know God is able, if you know God is good, if you know God will make a way, if you know God will open a door, if you know God will heal your body, you ought to have a spirit of expectancy. Is there anybody here that can throw up their hand and say God is able, he's able to deliver me, he's able to bring me out. I dare you to praise him like you know him. You ought to turn to your neighbor and say God is able. He's able to wipe tears away from my eyes. He's able to make my enemies behave. Is there anybody here that'll give my God the highest praise in here? Is there anybody here that know he's in the blessing business? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that'll put your hands together and tell my God, tell my God, tell my God, tell my God. Tell him thank you. Somebody shall thank you. Shout glory. Shout glory. Hey, hey, hey. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout glory. Shout. Shout glory. Shout glory. He's able. Spirit. Spirit of expectancy. The man looked up at him, gave heed to them. He was expecting something. What are you expecting of God? Let me ask you that. What are you tearing, wrestling about? What are you expecting of God? Let me add an element of reciprocity. What can God expect from you? I know what we are expecting of God. But what can God expect from you? Can God expect you to be faithful to him? Can God expect for you to live your life according to his word? Somebody's wrestling. There's something that you need God to do for you. You have a spirit of expectancy. Don't you allow your situation to dampen your spirit. Stay with me now. Sometimes we're so bogged down. So much stuff is going wrong in our lives. Medical challenges, financial challenges, relationship challenges, employment challenges, children, everything. 
So we don't feel worthy enough to expect God to move on our situation. But guess what? We are not worthy. But he's worthy. <laughs> we are not worthy. But he's worthy. In spite of our mess, he still loves us unconditionally. So you still have a right to expect that God would move on your situation. And God has a right to expect that when I move, will you turn around? Will you change the direction that you're going in? Will you repent from where you are? Will you make me numero uno in your life? I don't want to be dose. I don't want to be trace. I don't want to be quattro. I don't want to be cinco. I don't want to be saints. I don't want to be siete. I don't want to be ocho. I don't want to be nueve. I don't want to be diaz. Just letting y'all know I know a little Spanish. Do, do you want me? To be number one in your life. God, I messed up bad. God said, I know. But God said, your friends can't change it for you. Family can't do it. You got to come to me. And let me do what I do. Spirit of expectancy. I'm expecting God to do great things in the ministry of this church. But I know we have a responsibility to God. We can't expect God to do great things if we can't get along with one another. We can't expect God to do great things if we always tearing one another down. We can't expect God to do great things if we gossiping about each other. God said, if I'm going to do great things, I, I need the Central Missionary Baptist Church to get on one accord. If I'm going to do great things, I expect God to do great things. He's our father. We are his children. And every father wants the best for his child. He don't want to see us suffer. Can I tell you? You have cried your last tear on yesterday. He is your spiritual handkerchief. Weeping. It didn't say it would. It said it may. Endure for a night. Which means you don't have to cry. All night long. It may. Read the text. But when the morning comes. Can I tell you. It's morning for somebody. Right now. You ought to, that ought to shout you right there. It's morning for somebody right now. It's morning in your life right now. You've been in the dark for too long. The night time is over. Celebrate your morning. Praise God for your morning. Dance in your morning. Shout in your morning. Get the victory in your morning. Hey. Woo! Woo! It's morning time. It's morning time. It's morning time. It's morning time. Yeah. Yeah. New mercies every morning. That makes me happy right there. New mercy. Somebody just shout new mercy. Every morning. I want to know you in the morning of your new season. That's enough. It's your season now. Will you walk in your season? Will you walk in your season? It's your season now. Uh, God gave you a test. Uh, it's your season now. Just walk in your new season. Let us stand. It's your new morning now. Have a spirit of expectancy. As a believer, 
If you're living in an apartment, you're going looking for a house, expect God's going to make a way for you. Credit not what it should be. Expect God is giving you favor with somebody when you sit down in order to get it. Amen, somebody. Amen. Uh, need a car scared to buy one, go on the lot, start sitting in what you want. You don't know who you are. You got favor. Huh? Go test drive what you gonna be driving. Y'all didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. Go test drive what you gonna be driving. Let me throw this out free for you. And quit worrying about what folk going to say when you get something new. If they ain't paying for it, they don't have no opinion. Do I have a witness in here? Do I have a witness in here? If they are not making your note, their opinion is really not valid to what you got to do. If you pay for it, you own it, you drive it. Amen, somebody. And I love to confuse haters because they try to figure out how can you afford it. We work the same job. We make the same money. How you can afford that? I can't afford that. Uh, see, maybe you don't serve the same one I serve because the one I serve has a way of working things out for my good. I, I don't know how he do it, but he keeps right on blessing me. Somebody shout right on. Uh, he keeps right on blessing me. Shout, shout right on. Uh, turn and high five your neighbor. Say right on. Uh, he keeps right on blessing me. I don't know how he do it, but credit is bad, but he keeps right on blessing me. I didn't pay for the last car, but he blessed me with a new car. He keeps right on blessing me. I don't know how I moved in this house, but he keeps right on blessing me. I know you think I got a man helping me, but I don't have nothing but D-man that's helping me. He keeps right on blessing me. Just shout right on in here. Tell him, stay out my business, all up in my Kool-Aid, don't know my flavor. But he keeps right on, right on, right on, right on, right on blessing me. He'll do it. He'll do it. Let me share this and we're going to open the doors to church. I was doing a workshop yesterday morning up in our, uh, where was that at Deacon, sir? At Winsboro? County Grove, up in Winsboro. And Deacon Sutton and I was sitting there and, and his wife Jennifer went to a restaurant with one of their family members and they're managing, doing everything for it. I told him, I said, let me tell you what I've shown. The Lord has shown me that you and Jennifer are going to own the restaurant. So they tell me, you know, if she can run it, she can own it. You hear me? Jennifer, if you can run it, you can own it. Don't be afraid to step out on faith if you're doing all the work. So, so, so Dick, that scared Dick just a little bit. He's like, pow, 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 pow. we're doing a good one. No, you can own it. Walk in your thought, Ted. Don't be afraid to step out. If God be for you, he's more than the world is against you. There may be someone today up under the sound of my voice. You have a spirit of expectancy, but it's just been dampened a little bit. You know, you can go through so much in life, you'll stop dreaming. And you start settling for just getting by. It's more than life than going to work, waking up in the morning, going to bed at night and doing the same thing all the time. Learn to enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. Amen, somebody. We have this great plan. I'm going to work till I'm 65. I'm going to retire and then I'm going to enjoy life. By the time you get 65, everything higher than it was when you were 45 and the retirement check ain't enough and social insecurity It's not enough. Pamper yourself. Spa yourself sometime. Don't sit by and wait for somebody to send you to the spa. Go to the spa yourself. Fix yourself up. Dress yourself up. Look good for yourself. Pass by the mirror and high five the mirror and look at yourself. Be the best that God has called you to be. Somebody told me the other rib. I don't know what I'm going to see you driving there. That's right. Because that's how I roll. That's right. You don't know what's going to be parked in the space. Amen, somebody. Let us open the doors of the church. <laughs> oh, Jesus. There may be someone here today. You've been pressed down 
and your spirit of expectancy is still low. God can raise your spirit to be what God would have you to be. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you have made. You can turn this thing around. Maybe there's someone here. You have a church home back home. And you have been worshiping with us. We're not asking you to give up your church home. What we're asking you to do. Is to have a home away from your home. We invite you to step out from where you are today. To give the pastor your hand. But give God your heart. The door of the church at the Central Baptist Church is open. You may come by letter. Your Christian experience or a candidate for baptism. We serve a whosoever will God. And when we say the door is open, don't confuse it with these wooden doors. We're talking about Jesus. <laughs> Step out from where you are. So choir leads us in our invitation to him. And we will receive you. Yes, yes. Say it. Yes, yes. Say it, say it. Will you come today? We will receive you. Yes, yes, yes. Said. Perfect delight. Visions of rapture. A burst. Angels ascending. Set, set. Set, set. It's prayer time at the altar. Will you come to the altar for prayer? It's prayer time at the altar.